Today, I'll talk about just-in-time compiler or MRI or CRV. And uh, I'm Takashi Kokubin, so uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, last year of the RubyConf, uh, there are some similar people from Japanese, <laughs> and uh, people are confused uh, who is Matt or <laughs> Koichi or me. <laughs> they are wearing glasses or black uh, hoodies. And so this, time, this year, uh, I'm wearing very con convenient T-shirt that has icon. <laughs> so um, yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, this is my icon, so please remember me with this. Uh, and, and like, uh, even if uh, I attended uh, last year and uh, I met some people, and this year, some people said to me, nice to meet you, but some of you guys uh, I met so before. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, so the, my, one of the, my projects is the Hamlet. It's the originally uh, eight times faster version of Hamlet template language implementation. So I'm interested in uh, template engine optimization. Then I joined Hamo uh, organization, and uh, uh, this year uh, I optimized Hamo uh, five, uh, four times faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then joined I Ruby organization and uh, ERB maintainer. Then I made ERB two times faster. <laughs> this will be shifting 2.5. So I love fast things and making things faster. And I love Ruby language. So why not we, I optimize Ruby? So it's time to introduce JIT compiler. Um, I did this. The right one is the JIT compiler I made. Uh, this year. So this talk focuses on how I achieved this. <laughs> Before that, uh, probably many of you are, have no experience to develop JIT compiler. So <laughs> I <laughs> introduce what's JIT compiler. The JIT is the abbreviation of just-in-time. And uh, JIT compiler optimizes the um, program by co compiling the Comparing the program to native code. So, but uh, probably many of you guys have no experience to compile it to native code. So, what, so I will show the difference between uh, native code and uh, uh, bytecode. The, so, example method is that this uh, just three multiplies three method. And uh, it's by Ruby, uh, it's passed to this kind of uh, tree. And uh, it's compared to this kind of thing. So on the, the light side one is, uh, appears frequently, so please remember this. Um, the, it, the it means that the put three and put three again, and uh, multiply operation, and then leave means return. So it's very uh, simple, and uh, it's, uh, Ruby VM can understand the right side code as the uh, bytecode. Bytecode means the not native and the VM's uh, language. So, the and the Ruby VM is stack-based instruction. Uh, no, no, no. Stack-based VM. So, uh, when uh, Ruby VM interprets the bytecode, uh, it rolls the instruction one by one, and uh, it's uh, pushed to stack when the put instruction is uh, re read. And then uh, uh, three is pushed to stack again. And uh, when uh, it reaches the operation of multiply, uh, it's uh, cal calculated to nine. And then it's returned in leave the, from the, the VM evaluation method uh, returns the nine. So how is it different? Is it different from uh, JIT compiler's version? And with JIT compiler, normally uh, it has another thread in for JIT compiler, and uh, for from initial uh, it interprets the like the above uh, the former way, the, and uh, it reaches the 
um, call count, uh, method call count is the increased. Uh, JIT compiler detects it the, as the hot spot, hot spot and the hot, uh, JIT compiler compares the hot spot to native code. Then uh, VM switched to uh, call the, just call the native code instead of uh, dispatching uh, instructions by yourself. So the bytecode is the actual code of Ruby. And uh, <clears throat> after JIT generates the native code from bytecode, uh, Ruby VM starts to call native code. So it's the basic of JIT compiler. So if the native code is faster than uh, evaluating uh, bytecode one by one, uh, it becomes faster. But why this kind of complex thing introduced, should be introduced to Ruby? So first of all, I want to make things faster, but uh, the reason is, uh, one of the reasons is uh, money, uh, because <laughs> Uh, fast means that uh, it requires uh, less uh, compute resource. So the, your number of server can be decreased by uh, the, if the Ruby is optimized. And also, uh, in this experience, uh, if Ruby becomes two times faster, uh, probably your application becomes two times faster. So, <laughs> so if the, the application is faster, uh, probably uh, user experience is improved. And also, uh, to always use Ruby. Um, this year, I developed a uh, distributed Q middleware with Java. <laughs> but, uh, um, because of the parallelism and uh, uh, performance, but I want to use Ruby uh, in ideal situation uh, because I just love Ruby. So then and, uh, another criticism is that uh, just in time versus uh, ahead of time. Uh, the characteristics of the JIT compiler is that it compiles program during the execution of the method itself. And uh, you may think uh, currently uh, bytecode is compiled before the execution, but JIT does not compile the program before ex execution. But uh, LT compiles the uh, method to native code uh, before the execution. So why not LT for this uh, purpose? One of the reasons is the keep boot time shorter because the uh, optimizing method to native code is very time consuming. And uh, if the comparison is asynchronous, uh, comparison time can be skipped. So boot time or some one shot uh, task can be very fast. And uh, another reason is that uh, some optimization uh, require the runtime information because uh, Ruby is very dynamic, so n n many things can't be known until it's executed. So we can use the runtime information for that kind of uh, optimization. So then, um, another ah, so yeah. <laughs> so another reason is uh, there is uh, working uh, kind of working implementation uh, under achieved better performance. So there, there are some promising candidates of the JIT compilers. And uh, the right, lightest right side one, MJIT, is the Vladimir's uh, uh, JIT compiler. And uh, the one, one left side, uh, Yav MJIT, is one I created. So they are very a little faster than the Ruby 2.5. It's the current trunk, uh, most of, mostly trunk. And uh, it's uh, the two of the JIT compilers are doubles the performance. So uh, it's worth merging to the trunk, may may maybe. So the, uh, I want to uh, explain the mechanisms as much as possible. Mm. <laughs> um, there are three implementations I want to introduce here. Uh, two of them are made by me. Um, in a half a year, I developed two different JIT compilers. <laughs> yeah. First one, error <laughs> Ah, thank you. <laughs> the original 
title of this talk was the JLVM based JIT compiler, but method JIT compiler. But after Ruby KID finishes, I developed another JIT compiler called YAPM JIT. So this talk title is changed. <laughs> The, the middle one, MJIT, is uh, developed by Vladimo and uh, introduced by Matt uh, in the first keynote. So uh, I introduced one of them. Oh, sorry, uh, three of them. Uh, OK, there. Okay. So, so um, LRB is motivated by the RubyKai 2015 keynote. It's uh, presented by Evan Phoenix. It's very impressive. and. Uh, I very like the talk, and uh, its, uh, it's essence, essence is, was the converting the Ruby core by CRAN to uh, LLVM bytecode and uh, generate LLVM IL from uh, yeah, bytecode, then uh, compare them all together. So we, if we do that, uh, we can uh, inline uh, Ruby core's method to Ruby's method and very, very optimized. So, and uh, I made it possible with LLRB. Then, uh, I introduced uh, how it works. So, the, if, uh, when the, it uh, interprets the bytecode frequently, um, LLRB detects the uh, hotspot by stackprof-like profiler. And uh, uh, when it's uh, detected as a uh, hotspot, uh, JIT compiler uh, compiles the method to LLVMIR. The, the, the not good point is that it's not different thread. Uh, as it's experimental project, uh, it compares the same in the same thread. And uh, um, pre uh, there is a pre-compiled LLVM bit code from uh, Ruby's core methods. So it's the, and the LLVM uses the both of the LLVMIR. Then uh, it's uh, optimized well with those uh, LLVM IOs to native code. Then switch to uh, from evaluating bytecode to calling native code. So how was its performance? Um, with this, um, we're designed for this uh, implementation benchmark was <laughs> about five times faster. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, why, why is it fast anyway? Um, so it, it, it's the trick of the LLVM optimization is the L, called LLVM pass. LLVM pass is a kind of framework to analyze and optimize LLVM IR. And uh, any, many of the optimization of CRAN compiler is done in LLVM pass. It's kind of rack and middlewares. So, and uh, it takes LLVM IL and uh, outputs LLVM IL. So we can uh, organize uh, many LLVM paths uh, you want. And then uh, uh, probably you can't read them, but uh, uh, they are the <coughs> LLVM paths used in LLRB and uh, affected the performance. But uh, I could reproduce the same five times faster performance with only two passes. So let's see how they contribute to performance. So uh, it's, it would be the secret of LLRB's optimization. The summary, um, the just compiling the code to native code is not uh, makes it faster. Um, because uh, just compiling to native code means just uh, removing the dispatch of instructions. Um, bytecode dispatch was the go to, just go to. Uh, leave <laughs> uh, reading a pointer of Ravel from some array and uh, j go to to so the array, some address of in function some some address of function yeah it's okay so oh, it's not so um, op uh, optimizing then uh, if we add, add a function inlining pass to this pipeline uh, it's optimized well. And uh, uh, LACM pass is loop invariant code emo rem uh, emotion is uh, uh, also has the major impact. But uh, uh, as you can see, uh, inlining function is the very important thing for optimizing native code. So, so I learned that thing from this uh, LRB project. But uh, learnings from LRV is that um, LRVM is hard to develop with. 
And uh, uh, also, um, LRV works with LRVM 4.0, but it does not work with LRVM 5.0. So <laughs> it's very breaking, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, um, the, and also, uh, debugging is very important to maintain a uh, pro program uh, for a long time, but uh, LLVM IR is, of course, it's not C language. So we, if we, when we do debugging with GDB, uh, uh, we can see C code for native code because it's in LLVM IR. So it will be harder to debug. So. Uh, I wanted to uh, I wanted to tackle another version. Uh, it's built with C, C language. Uh, so um, and uh, so yeah. Uh, main, um, important learnings from this is that uh, Ruby uh, main optimization target of LRB is uh, Ruby cores method. So directory generating the LLVM IR was not. Uh, important or major has, didn't have major impact for optimization. So using Krang would be enough for optimizing uh, C language code of MRI. So I changed the approach. Then before I introduce uh, another one, uh, I want to introduce MJIT for the version of Matt's keynote. And, uh, Emjit is developed by uh, Vladimir Makarov. Uh, he is a GCC maintainer. And uh, Emjit project consists of two components. It's just not uh, JIT compiler. It has uh, VM instruction replacement and also uh, Emjit uh, message JIT in compiler. Mes uh, VM instructions are kind of a put object or leave, or they, all of them were replaced in this project. And, uh, as you were seeing, uh, YARB is cur currently stack-based uh, VM, like Java, but uh, this project replaces it to uh, register-based uh, uh, instructions. S and uh, I, another point I want to fig uh, fig uh, notice is that um, this dynamic bytecode specialization. Uh, it also does uh, static bytecode specialization, but also dynamic ones. Uh, when method is executed or evaluated in VM, uh, it changes the bytecode to another instruction. Like uh, this uh, example is the uh, in the set. In the set is the uh, uh, RA, RF, RF um, reference as no set. And the uh, set has the version of array version or and the uh, argument is integer version. So many specialized version are existing uh, image it. And it's also, uh, it's, it will be it will contribute to the JIT performance because uh, if the code is well, um, small, can be smaller, uh, inner version can be, uh, of course, uh, many uh, optimized well. So it's uh, good for JIT compiler. And uh, <clears throat> background, uh, the method uh, difference between uh, LRB and image JIT is that uh, it's compiled in background thread with pre thread. So um, it's, it's currently not uh, uh, portable to uh, Windows, but the uh, uh, important thing is that it, it's compiled asynchronously, so it's good performance. And uh, it also has the optimization. Probably you may not know, but uh, during the intermediate states of uh, JIT coring, coring uh, it can fall back to bytecode by uh, restoring the state of uh, original uh, by, uh, VM states. So let's see how it works. Um, here's original version, a uh, current version of M MRI, and uh, it's replaced like this. Um, the right side, the instructions are MGIT's original RTR instructions, and uh, VM has an uh, infinite number of registers. And, uh, um, MJIT reads the instruction and uh, uh, assigns the values to register instead of stack. And, uh, and uh, when during execution, uh, it specializes the instruction by the receiver or arguments type. It's, it will be uh, good for in inlining the definitions for uh, in the JIT compiler. Then uh, register, uh, uh, instruction returns the value from register. 
it's the difference from uh, uh, the current behavior. And image it uh, interprets the during the image interprets bytecode uh, under this thread, compares the bytecode to uh, C code. It's the very uh, kind of invention from in image it. Uh, it writes the C code to disk directory, and uh, it uh, reads GCC or CRAN, the C compiler binary, or the JIT compiler executes ex uh, calls exec to uh, execute the compiler, and uh, it's compiled to SO, SO file. And uh, uh, DLC in function, uh, calling DLC in function uh, allows us to roll the native code as a C function pointer, so we can call uh, that C function from VM instead of uh, evaluating the bytecode. So how is MZIT? Uh, MZIT achieved great performance, very great. It claims uh, three times faster uh, from uh, Ruby 2.4. Actually, it was not true in my machine, but uh, kind of very faster. And uh, replacing, but uh, also, uh, it replaces the compiler to uh, generate the another instruction sets. And uh, also, uh, VM instruction, uh, so replacing VM instruction at all might be very risky. So I thought uh, I want to uh, fix this. Then I forked this, Yav MJIT. Yeah, the, this is the fork of MJIT project, and uh, um, this, is, this project is currently I'm working on. And uh, yeah, yeah, and the ma major characteristic is that um, it achieves JIT comparison without uh, changing uh, VM insertions at all. So it simulates stack in on comparison and uh, does not require register-based instructions. So let's see how Yav MJIT optimizes this. Um, and, uh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, 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 okay, uh, I understood. <laughs> so <laughs> before, before seeing how JIT compiler optimizes the method, uh, how would you uh, optimize this method in VM level? You may uh, think this can be possible, like by, um, just putting nine from uh, from initial. But consider this method. This, this redefinition allows us to do this kind of three multiplied three equals to three somehow. So <laughs> this this optimization can't be done in uh, it's not, not not impossible, but it's hard. And currently, uh, Yarb does not uh, optimize in this way. But uh, in Yarb MJIT, it in, during its interpretation, uh, JIT compiler checks the code count and generates C code in like this. Um, probably it's hard to see, but just uh, doing optimal is called with uh, three, three and three arguments. And uh, also, uh, important thing is that uh, it has the the definition of automat it is for uh, in the in line in the future cuz i learned uh, inlining is important in lrb uh, i was um, i made sure that it's inline in this version so c compiler compiles this source code and then uh, if as uh, the method definition of automat is included in this source code uh, it's inline in this way in C compiler. And then as uh, three and three is uh, uh, provided in this source code, uh, the three multiplied three is calculated beforehand in uh, before execution. And uh, also n notable thing is that it uh, 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 checks the re method redefinition uh, properly. So it really works. <coughs> And we can return uh, the result, optimize the result. Uh, it's optimized by C compiler. Um, they, I want to th say that uh, uh, this is not optimized by our uh, work, but, uh, but it's uh, optimized by other C compilers' uh, efforts. So optimizing code would be very complex thing, but uh, we can derogate the such hard work to uh, see uh, very good uh, other things. 
Then it's uh, loaded as uh, so file and uh, DSM to native code and uh, call this one. So uh, we can return the optimized uh, nine, just nine, without calculating the multiply. Of course, it's uh, we probably such optimization wouldn't be needed just if just it's a multiply uh, calculation. But uh, the another very complex version of the optimization can be uh, provided uh, because we don't uh, do some specific optimization in ourselves. In ourselves. <coughs> So basic ideas to optimize MJIT is the inlining functions and uh, skip unnecessary work and uh, decreasing comparison time. And uh, so I introduce uh, secrets of yeah, MJIT uh, optimizations. For, um, many of following slides are in only text, so you may be s uh, sleepy, but uh, please ask me questions out later. Um, the first one is, uh, inlining function by having VM source code as header. MJIT originally do this by uh, compiling vm.c beforehand and uh, compiling not uh, fully compiled but uh, just preprocessing uh, header uh, include or define or things like that. <coughs> so by having those uh, VM instructions, uh, many of the frequently used methods uh, in VM instructions, uh, we can uh, inline those methods. And then uh, transform functions in header to static. As, as the VM.c compared uh, header is the, can be dealt with by our script, um, <coughs> we can modify this header by our Ruby script. And, uh, we, uh, we uh, image it as the static to the non-static uh, functions. And uh, if the function is static, uh, C compiler can know it is not necessary to be compiled. So comparison is skipped for those static functions. And uh, another technique is the uh, skip set jump. Set, probably you may not know uh, set jump, but uh, it's used for uh, exception, implementing exception. Exception, exception is uh, implemented with set jump or wrong, and wrong jump, and of course uh, it needs to store some st states of the VM, so it's very slow. So MG skips it uh, if the method does not seem to raise exception. So of, of course we need to check it may not. Uh, raise exception, but currently, yeah, MJ does not check it properly, so I'll fix it later. And um, another, about inlining large function, uh, it's the for just decreasing comparison time. Um, when I developed Yab MJ in the first, uh, its, its comparison is very slow, like 500 milliseconds uh, for each method, but uh, if we take if we take uh, 500 milliseconds for one method comparison, uh, very limited number of uh, methods can be compiled in during the benchmark. So optical score was very small in that state. So uh, VM search method is the function that uh, searches the method. So it's very complex things because um, Ruby is very complex about method Ruby methods. So it's very slow to compile. So MJ just uh, implements also implements the optimization to skip that uh, execution. And uh, then a uh, very complicated thing is the base pointer. Probably we, I can't uh, explain this precisely, but uh, um, uh, as the JTED code is executed frequently, um, only JIT compiler compiles hotspots, so all of the methods compiled one is the hotspots. So many, m all of the um, very small tasks would be impact, have impact. And uh, calculate, we can ca calculate the uh, base pointer is needed to restore the state to, uh, before the JIT run. run. Um, please ask this later, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> And uh, our last two ones are uh, inline external functions using VM instructions. Uh, some of the functions in instances.dev is the, uh, not a uh, static one, and uh, it's linked 
as the extended functions. So we, of, as the JIT header is compiled from VM.C, uh, functions not in VM.C is not are not available for a VM, uh, VM compi uh, JIT compiler. So I added some, of, ported some of the uh, method definitions to header uh, by many some uh, efforts, but uh, MJIT does this by uh, by dynamic particle specialization, as it replaces the instructions. Uh, to some specialized ones. Specialized one has the definitions. So uh, MJIT can uh, inline those things. So it's faster. And the last one is the inline setup method call. Um, this is the using runtime information. And uh, uh, RubyVM Yab has the call cache in bytecode. Bytecode has its inline cache. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Core cache is uh, used to implement inline method cache. Inline method cache is the only used for the one place. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> um, it's, it's very hard to explain, but it has the definition of the method, and the, the cache is uh, created in during the execution. So we can uh, use the core cache to detect which is the ty which type is used for Ruby method. So there are many types of Ruby method, like uh, imp uh, implemented in Ruby and implemented in C function or alias or uh, attribute reader or things like that. If we uh, detect those uh, types, uh, we can inline the setup, setup of the, uh, method call. And uh, it, this optimization had a uh, large impact. Then with those techniques, uh, Yarb MJIT achieved this uh, very good performance compared to current uh, trunk. So future works of Yarb MJIT optimizations are port more techniques from MJIT because uh, it's folk and uh, some uh, removing unnecessary functions in per combined header is not implemented yet because um, it depends on some out here limited code. Also, um, <coughs> I want to, I. I think I can inline a core, a core method defined with C function because uh, we can detect the type in um, core cache and we primarily we can know the, um, which function can be, is, can be used for the Ruby C function defined uh, method call. And uh, probably we can inline method defined with bytecode by the using the detecting it by core cache. Uh, so no, 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 no. Um, uh, <laughs> it needs to save some uh, last compiled some jitted code. Um, if we store some uh, jitted uh, C functions, previous C functions, pr uh, we can use it f to refer to that method. So I think uh, method defined with bytecode can be in line. Then the main Part of this talk is the how can we realize JIT for MRI? Because this is conference. Yeah. <laughs> so many people have failed to introduce JIT. Um, there were some uh, talks uh, to about JIT compiler in Ruby Kaigi. Um, so <laughs> LRV is very similar or uh, uses that same technique with YAB to LRVM. It's very old project, and uh, we have fared from such old uh, age. And uh, also, there is uh, there was a promising uh, JIT compiler, uh, trace tracing based uh, JIT compiler, uh, Lugit, but also it's not uh, merged to Ruby core for now. And uh, also, uh, Ruby News, probably you may know, uh, Ruby News uses LVM, and uh, it has JIT compiler. I believed so, and I I started I lead, led the uh, Rubinius code before I implement uh, LRV, but uh, actually it didn't have JIT compiler in 3.0 because uh, they said um, JIT compiler is hard to maintain and uh, it has many bugs, so it's very difficult thing to introduce JIT. But uh, we should um, solve those problems. Why did they fail? Um, Yab to LVM was the how to improve performance with the uh, MRI runtime because probably it's the uh, very old 
So uh, the VM are different. And uh, Ruby, uh, Rigid was the memory consuming, so it's not merged. But MGIT solved this part well. Also, uh, Rubinius was the hard to fix uh, bugs in JIT. So let's see one by one those problems. Um, can we solve improved performance? Uh, so MGIT uh, achieved the performance, and uh, I did per uh, improvement performance. And also, uh, many of you um, uh, good people, uh, Endosan and Noah Gibbs, uh, made uh, very good benchmarks. So thank you. And uh, so. And it's good, very good for improving performance. And uh, memory consuming, uh, image solved this problem too. And uh, how to fix bugs is very um, large problem. Um, so image does not use LLM directory. Um, probably uh, it can be used by a crank, but it doesn't use LLM direct, at least directory. And uh, so no need to keep up with breaking changes. And uh, we can debug C using C code, using uh, GDB. Um, so very easy, uh, it very so easier to debug in C code. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as v VM code is written in C, we can debug is re only seeing C codes. But image needs many changes for interaction. And uh, the very normal thing is that the less you change, the more unlikely it will be have, have bugs. So I want to reduce the changes. The, the, I want to say in this talk, make initial release as safe as possible. Because I, we are using Ruby in production. And also my pr a pr application in my company is very serious to want to be it's very, want to, I want to make it to be very stable. So I, I, want, I don't want to introduce very breaking change to uh, Ruby. So don't solve many difficult problems at the same time. So MG does uh, replacing VM instructions, all, all of the instructions, and uh, it introduces uh, this compiler, but it's not portable. So we need do, to do two different very difficult problems. And uh, I, I want to uh, make it optional at first, but we can't turn off uh, replacing VM instructions because uh, bytecode is compiled beforehand, and uh, the, unlike MGIT, uh, it can't be turned off. So if the only MGIT is introduced, uh, we can turn off the JIT compiler by just uh, stop to pass the option. So even if uh, we found the pro problem in JIT compiler, we can turn off. So it's very safe. And uh, also, uh, I want to uh, change it gradually. So big one release is very um, risky, and uh, it's hard to develop. Oh, it's also hard to develop, because uh, releasing takes, uh, may uh, face conflicts, many conflicts. Uh, I want to develop in gradually. So this is the current status of those JIT projects. Um, uh, MGIT is not slower than Ruby 2.0, but it's actually slower than current Ruby trunk. And, but Yab MGIT does not modify VM, so it's not slower. And uh, I want, another thing is that uh, Yab MGIT does not modify VM instructions, so it passes all the tests in Ruby Core um, without JIT, but uh, yeah, MGIT replaces uh, instructions and it fails with current uh, test all and uh, Ruby spec. So I, I think uh, Yarrow MGIT is uh, very safer. So we need your help. Uh, please uh, try and uh, report bugs to those repositories. Um, reporting bugs is very helpful helpful to develop. And one of the Ruby committer uh, uh, called Wanabe-san is uh, reporting bugs to Yav MGIT is and very is helpful. So I write this um, how to use Yav MGIT. So read this. <laughs> I publish this. So <laughs> conclusion: um, Message compiler for MRA can gain good performance by inlining on the Yav MGIT is a safe migration path to realize MGIT uh, realization. Um, I want to realize JIT compiler. To realize JIT, bug repos using MinRuby are very helpful. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>